Hello and welcome back to uh, Drawed, Rodents of Unusual Size. Uh, unfortunately, we are not where we left off uh, because I had a recording error. So let's go back up to here and recount what happened in the past 45 minutes. It was actually a shorter episode. Uh, so this room, I actually solved this in about five minutes uh, because, well, let's uh, let's go to the let's go to the. Let's just go to the, the replay, and we'll, we'll... there we go. Let's stop it. So the things that I had been doing were mostly correct. Where does it stop? Okay, I think this is where we had stopped it. Yes, okay, so this is where we had stopped it before. And... Okay, I can't I can point to things with the mouse. Okay, this is good. So I was having a lot of trouble trying to find a path that would take the lemming down here. And I guess just spending a couple of days away from it, I come back to this and suddenly I thought, wait a minute, instead of putting the construct here, why don't I do the construct on this one? I can kill it in time, get here, get in here, and then this, I'm going to just shove that over one and that's gonna fix fix that whole thing and everything's just gonna work. So Exterminate. Uh, that's what I did. Exterminate. So with this uh, this is in this position so that when the lemming is coming this way, uh, it'll go up here instead. And so it goes lemming, construct, lemming, lemming. Exterminate. Use the preferences of the construct here. Lemming is going. We can use the construct preferences to get it where we need it to go. Exterminate. Lemming does its thing. Exterminate. Exterminate. And that's it. With less reflections, done properly even. Alright, and we have another room. Okay, so... Man, so I'm, I'm a little bit rattled because of the recording issue, so I don't even remember if I said this or not already in this part. The reason that the recording screwed up, I mean, it was my fault, but I had a, I had a really big Windows update, and it reset a whole bunch of like random settings on a bunch of different things on my computer. Uh, I'm not sure why it did that, like, my the, just the way the folders look on my computer, everything was, like, changed, and... It didn't make any sense. It seemed like everything was just kind of put on a random setting. So I had to muck around with that, and I didn't realize that in my OBS, my microphone was no longer picking up. I had to, because it went to default, which the computer doesn't have a default, so as opposed to using the external microphone. So that was an issue. But anyway, all that you really missed, aside from that, which was more or less the same as what we just did, uh, this, this room Um, I should probably just restore, actually. Let me show this off. So this room... This took me about 40-45 minutes to figure out. So we have a lemming running around, uh, running around the outside here. And as you can see, each of these pressure plates corresponds to one of these four doors. That means that we need something to be running around here in order to get to the Conquer token. Now, these trapdoor gates are interesting because with the way that this trapdoor is set up, if we go in here, we're trapped. We can never get out. Which I guess is a pretty good hint as to the first part of the problem, which is that in order to activate this Conquer token, you have to have the Lemming walk over it. Lemmings activate tokens. Now that happened to be something that I already knew, and I, I thought of that right away. That wasn't the part of the room I had trouble with. But I was thinking about it. That's... I don't think the... Um, the... Uh, where is it? Here. The introduction room. There are no tokens in here. So this is an aspect of lemmings that you just kind of have to find. 
And I haven't had a single room in here where lemmings were moving across tokens that I can think of. So this seemed a little bit unfair from a development perspective. Like, this is a custom element that does this obscure interaction. I mean, sure, it's easy to figure out that you can't go in there yourself, but then it's like, well, what else can you possibly do? And I guess trying the lemming, maybe? But it's such a pain to get the lemming here, which is what took me like half an hour, 40 minutes. It's such a pain to get the lemming in here that it's not like a reasonable thing you can just kind of try out. Like, it would have been nice if there was a way for the player to test the lemming moving over tokens thing. In And I, I could have explored the rest of the level, maybe, but, you know. Anyways, that's, that's my complaint about this room. The room itself was actually pretty good. So what else, uh, what else is there to show off here? So we have four pressure plates that activate these, which means that for the lemming, the lemming goes through here, uh, the lemming is stuck on this arrow, and then you can just kind of walk around at your leisure and the lemming will, will get through and will hit this. This closes this. So if this pressure plate is held down by the lemming or the roach at any point, you will never be able to extract the lemming from the conquer token. It will be stuck in there. Nothing opens the door. So nothing can step on this plate, on this pressure plate. Finally, we have two orbs. We have this orb, which opens both of these, and this orb, which closes this, which is a pretty serious problem. Although not as serious. It, it caused me about Again, I would say 10-15 minutes of issue of um, trying to figure out how to get from here to here quickly without hitting this orb. Uh, but anyway, let's walk through some of this so I can I kind of show off how this how this works. We'll do it without the loving for now. So this roach, if I want to do anything useful with the roach, no, like just like that. Uh, I don't want the roach to leave these arrows. Right, if I... Oh, I never actually tried to do that. Okay, that works. <laughs> um, it doesn't really do you a whole lot of good, though, because then the roach is just going to come out this way. And you can't rest it here. So... I didn't, I didn't know you could keep it in there like that. Hmm. But, if you time this, so lemming starts to move, you barely have enough time to keep the roach inside this area. Let me hit that for you. You can pass the lemming on the corners. This allows us to get the roach up here. And as far as positions that you can put this roach, that's really all you can control. Pass the lemming. So eventually I I decided that I needed this roach to be coming out this way first. And that this, uh, whoops, let's go up. Right, so that the lemming doesn't release the, the roach. I wanted the roach to be coming down this way when I was doing stuff with the lemming. Now the only way I oh right that that's an issue. I have to stand on this side so that the roach doesn't get released. So the only way you can actually get the lemming in here, well okay, there are two ways. You can have the roach block the lemming and then the lemming will move up, but then the roach is out here, so you can't use the roach to manipulate the lemming. Or you can use your sword. The problem with this, let's see. Uh, so I had to time this out. I determined that this is the turn I want to move on. Because this way, Roach moves first, and I can turn the Lemming that way, by blocking it with the Roach. Problem is, I need... to not hit this, because I need... to do something like this. And that way I'm blocking the roach with my sword and the lemming moves up. And I calculated if I hit the pressure plate from here instead of from here, I'd be able to I have just enough time. That one turn makes enough of a difference with turning your sword. So if I Again, if I do something like this. If 
Alright, and the roach is here. If I had had one more turn, roach was here still. So, so if I started here instead of here, I could block the roach here, lemming would turn up, and everything would everything would be good. Uh, but as it's, as it so happens, um, the thing I didn't consider doing was waiting a turn here. And the reason that this works is because with this setup, Roach moves first, turns the lemming up, and then the lemming gets stuck in place. And then you can close this or not, it doesn't really matter. And from here you just kind of bring Bring the lemming through. <laughs> lemming activates the token. Doesn't matter if this gets hit anymore. We block that so that the lemming will come out this way for us. And there you go, that's the room. So that took me, yeah, like 40 45 minutes um, just to. Most of that was timing exactly where I wanted the lemming to be when I released the roach, uh, exactly how I could manipulate the roach movement, and also uh, this final section where I didn't realize like you can waiting a turn will actually allow the roach to cut off the lemming again by using this wall as a barrier. So anyway, that was. 50 minutes, uh, which means that I still don't have an episode, so I guess we're gonna do one more room. Or two more rooms, maybe. Uh, this is an enclosed space. Suddenly I'm looking for cracked walls. I don't see any. Well, I mean, there's that, obviously, but... No, okay. It seemed like the kind of place that it might have had a secret. Those secrets don't seem to be hidden that way in this hold. Okay, so what's the deal with this room? We have a Fagundo Lemming, we have a Clone Potion, which that's going to let us do some really weird stuff with um, with orientation, which is really cool. I think I think that's what this is going to be about, because if we switch clones, we can suddenly change our orientation in a much faster way. Because if we try to get through here, for example, yeah, we can't we can't make these, these these turns, right? We go diagonal, 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 down, uh, diagonal, hit something, or hit this bomb. Like we can't we can't get around these corners with a single B throw, a single armed B throw. Well, I mean dagger. Okay, whatever. Um, anyway, so we can get through. So why do we need this to survive? Why can't we just blow up these bombs and be done with it? Well, let's see. We have to hit this. It means we have to hit this. Okay. Oh. Never mind. If we have a clone here on the Ormites, that kind of invalidates the double bone puzzle that I was thinking of. Because then you can just have one guy on the Ormites turning easily by bumping walls or whatever. Yeah. Well, that's disappointing. Okay, if I look at this bomb structure, I think it's set up and said, well, okay, there's Ormites here, so if I hit this orb myself with B throw or with the clone, I cannot get out. I would be trapped in here. Uh, likewise, just looking at this setup here. Okay, what opens this? That does. Okay. Uh, looking at this setup, I don't think I can actually get through here. Yeah, I don't think I can even get past this section with B throw. There's no move that'll let me get past those bombs. Okay, so that means one B throw is basically stuck up here, and the second one with the potion can be placed anywhere, I guess. Uh, although, this looks very much like a mechanism where I am forced to place it here to kill the evil eye, because nothing else will. And then Fagundo releases the clone. Fagundo releases this clone. 
Clone comes out. Uh, we could operate this with either the Fagundo or with this Lemming. I think... I think, the set, I think this is actually a really easy room, if I'm looking at this right. We put the clone here, kill this, we kill the evil eye. This lemming steps here, releases the clone. Then the lemming goes here, hits this, gets through this. So unless the bomb maze stuff maneuverability ends up being really tricky, uh, this isn't actually going to be that hard. And then finally, once we've gotten out of this, we hit this, blow it up, and we with the, the Fagundo. And we have to do that, because otherwise this lemming is going to eat this bomb. Then we stand here with our sword this way. Lemming comes down here. It's that. We hit the lemming, the clone, and then we escape with the, the real V-throw. Okay. <laughs> So, all right, change, oops, wait, change, wait. Yep, that was easy enough. Switch, uh, whoops, switch, switch clones and wait, okay. Okay, that'll kill the roach. And we have to be in this kind of a setup here. Okay, and then the tricky part here is going to be getting this arrangement such that we can get out through here. So we needed to be facing this way and this way to make that corner. But now we have to be facing this way and this way. So we have to turn you Well, we can't turn you I haven't hit a single checkpoint, have I, except for this. Okay. Yeah, this is the hard part here. Um, instead of messing around with this... Let's just... Start over. This is why we can't just hit this with a clone. Never mind. Okay, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna hit this with a clone, and then. Right, that's not gonna work. Okay. This is very much impossible. Okay, well, no, uh, we just do the thing I said before, except we use this. Okay. Okay, we're gonna get you out. Thank <laughs> you. 
and we use that position. Use that little bit of Ormites in order to cheat. Because now we can step off and do that. Okay. Are you gonna die on there? No, you're safe. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Well, that was, yeah, that was pretty, pretty straightforward. It's the trick of noticing the Ormites and then remembering use the Ormites. The that worked. Okay. Feels like one of the easier rooms that I've found so far. Well, let's keep going. Oh dear, this looks complicated, and I have and I have a staff, so I can push all these decoys all over the place. Also Challenge? Challenge route? No. There is a room to the south here. Okay, this room oh, this room isn't even required. That's not a good sign. Okay, do any of these rotate when I move? No. Okay. These are all regular lemmings. Uh, I have to just open that and this will instantly hit. Is that the same turn? Yes. Is it the same turn if I use a lemming? Yes. Okay. Right, lemming movement is before briar growth, but their turn order, their turn processing is a little bit weird for the lemmings, so I just wanted to double check that, even though it did pretty much what I expected it to. Okay, so what do I do here? I step on this after killing all of the lemmings. I kill all the lemmings. The problem is... The problem is... Once I've stepped on this, let's see. Mm. Okay. So I step on this, all of this opens. If I step on this on the same turn that I step on this... This will close and prevent that from happening. What does this do? It just blocks that. So this is just saying... Here, have a mirror. Only, not really. Really? Hmm. Okay. So this is kind of weird. So yeah, I can I can choose to disarm myself. But even still... I'm gonna step onto the, the token. And get that. So there's no way... There does not appear to be any way to extract this mirror. Um, well, hold on. Could I get this lemming, or this lemming, in here? If I push it here, this is closed. 
which means this is going to separate me and the, me and the lemming. There's no way with a staff to be adjacent to something and like I'd have to body push it in order for me to be here with the lemming here. So that's not going to happen. Since I cannot do that, that means I cannot get a lemming through here. Okay, so this has to be me pushing this. Which, because of these, there's nothing that deactivates these arrows. Regardless of the status of my weapon. Well, I mean... I could get rid of it. But then, why... Why even go through? Why even go in here in the first place if I was gonna get rid of the mirror? Because this, all it does is close that, and I already have access to the disarm token, so that seems pointless. So this, this whole section seems kind of pointless, which is a cause for concern, definitely. Okay, what happens? If we're disarmed and we push okay it does not shatter and if we wait it does not shatter okay so decoys do not shatter mirrors when they become rearmed uh, I'm very confused by this I do not see how this could benefit benefit me in any way Nothing opens that. Yeah, I can put a different lemming up, but then it's just going to get stuck. Okay, so we have a mechanism that does nothing. I'm just going to ignore that until I figure out... Like, I don't even know why I would need the mirror, so I'm going to... I'm going to need the mirror to hit this, probably, is what it's going to be. Okay, um... Okay, what would happen what would happen if we Spawned, uh, it's it's going to be the same as the mirror, right? This isn't going to do anything? Ah, I was too slow anyway. By one turn. Could I have been more efficient? Yes, I could have. Uh, I could get. I could get one extra turn this way. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to push the mirror onto the pressure plate, have a lemming push it off, and then stab the lemming all in the same turn, and see if that can have us not actually trigger this. I don't think. I think it's still going to be pushed. But anyway, this is what I'm. This is what I'm trying to do. We delayed it a turn with that lemming. Yeah, no, because I just I push the mirror. I push the mirror and then this happens instantly. this. 
I s like the problem here, obviously, is that if I is if I do something like this, it's only going to move one tile. I need it to move twice. Uh, in order for it to move twice. Okay, if I had if I had a mirror, if I had a mirror here, and I had a faster are you faster? Eleven twelve, you are. If I had lemming mirror here, this lemming here and the mirror here. You would move first, you would push that, you would move second, and push it again. Okay, so now now we're at a point where if I can extract this mirror, I win. How can I extract the mirror? without killing either of you, and without pushing this down. Well, I already determined that extracting the mirror was impossible, right? Going to involve the lemmings somehow. There's going to be a way to do it. No point in pushing a lemming here. Again, I'm pretty sure this isn't going to work, but yeah, in order to get you here, I have to do that, and that locks me out. So something, something using all of these, something using these decoys and the lemmings. Get a mirror out. And there's like a non like this is an optional room with something after it, with a one-way tunnel path. Now, I do remember the whole triggering of the challenges, right? Like I could I could do something like this. But then I am so stuck. Okay, how about triggering disarm status? Triggering disarm status using a lemming. Would that help me? Would that help me in any way? Problem is that with the mirror the way it is, I need to push it here. And then I can't push it diagonally, I can't push it orthogonally. The only spot I can push it is this way. I don't think the, the push on and push off is actually going to work anyway, because... Because... Okay, so I just, I just saw what I was supposed to do. Okay, but... Yeah, the push on the push off isn't going to work anyway because if I were to demonstrate this with a sword, I'm going to push on push off in the same turn and it still pressed it down. So no, that's that's totally the wrong thing. But no, what what I actually do here is 
I do something like this, where this releases the decoys, which releases the lemmings, which cause the lemmings to push this from here to here in, a, in this turn. So that is now my goal. So how many lemmings do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here. One, two, three, four. But I can't go directly there. Okay. Uh, we don't have any that face down. Well. Oh, this one's going to be... You're going to be nice and helpful, aren't you? All right, so I, I have, let's say I push... Okay, well, that's another thing to test. What will happen... if I push you into that sword? It's fine, okay. That's good. So that means I could do something like that to hold a lemming in place, and then you would. Well, again, I can. I can check this. So if I'm doing something like this to start. Yeah. 12, 10, 7, 8, 11, 9. Uh, oh, I guess that's a hint, isn't it? The lemmings have to move in order. So is 9 the earliest? 9, 11, 8, 12, 13, 7, 10. Okay, so 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 10. 7, 8, 9, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. One more time. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. So you have to be the first one. Well, that's, that's not too bad. I don't even have to use the same decoys with them necessarily, but the same decoys will work. There we go. So seven pushes it here. Do I really want to use you? No. Okay, so we're here. Right, we want the swords. So the swords show the path of the mirror. So, 7, 9, we've decided to skip 8 because you're going in the wrong direction. You'd move, you'd move it down here. Maybe, but... 9, so we're now here. Ten, okay, so we can't put... Because of the way the decoys are, we can't, this solution does not work. Because we cannot put a decoy blocking this. Because this is blocked, and this is blocked. Okay, but if we used you instead of you... There we go. That'll work. So, because the, the order of the decoys doesn't matter. So you were next, 10, and you're going to push it here. 
Uh, you're gonna push from there, okay. Okay. So from here, seven, nine, ten. So we have push, push, push. This is open at this point, yes. Oh, and then we just put you there. That'll do it. Won't it? Will this not work? Why will this not work? <laughs> Looks fine to me. was surprisingly straightforward. For an optional room, I was expecting this to be a lot worse than that. Second place, and I wasn't even trying to optimize. Maybe I broke this. I don't know. Or maybe it's just an optional room, so a lot of people didn't bother with it. Here's an optional room that's actually a secret room. If you stand on the Ormite Zone, the envelope will face south. Oh, okay, and that's not even a scripting thing, that's just a special rules of Omplic thing. Okay. Uh, should I be attempting this right now? Probably not. It's been a, a long recording session with uh, almost hour that I spent on those two rooms, and then another 40 minutes here. So you know what? Maybe... Challenge. Don't step on any of the pressure plates. Both both you and the blue lemon. Uh, spend a little bit of time parsing the room maybe, but then actually try to solve it next time. And that way maybe I'll parse it differently the second time, and that'll save me a whole bunch of flailing around uselessly. Okay, so why would I want the omplic to hit this? Because that's the only way the Omplic's going to die. Okay. Omplic dying gives me access to a clone potion. Here we have... Eight pressure plates. Uh, all of them have to be held down at the same time for the Omplic to hit the fuse. And they have to be held down two at a time, or else... Uh, an even number have to be held down at all times. Zero being an even number. Otherwise, the Wubba steps here, and once the Wubba moves, the room is unclearable. All right, we have for our resources one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lemmings, none of which are bent tail. Okay, and a mimic lemming. Okay. And the challenge is to not put the clone, uh, the Bethro or this lemming on any of these, presumably at any time. I don't know if it's going, well, it doesn't matter. Um, if the challenge scripting is robust, it should only check on the turn that the fuse is lit, but um, assuming the challenge was worded the way I, I interpreted. <laughs> oh, let's, let's look at that again. Don't step on any of the pressure plates, but yeah, okay, so I guess the way this is worded, if I step on this pressure plate with the with the, the Mimic Lemming at any time, then the challenge will not will not trigger. Um, personally, I would have had to just check, like, wait for lit fuse and then check the pressure plates uh, because there's nothing here that could push so you would know. Uh, I guess, actually, I was not quite accurate with that. It doesn't have to be all at the same time because, well, I mean, there there's two space between each one, so yeah, you can't you can't step off and onto another one at the same turn and have them both be open during the Omplex turn. That's not going to work. If they were closer together, that would have. So that means we can put a decoy on these. Okay. 
So we can put a decoy on on these. So the obvious thing seems to be each lemming just kind of runs in its direction. Wait a minute. I don't have to. I don't have to set up all eight of these simultaneously because of these arrows in here. I can do as long as I'm setting them up in pairs, two at a time. I can take as long as I want. Uh, the fact that I have to do two at a time also means I'm well. I can. How does how does the timing work on these decoys? Oh. How do these open? Okay, they all open at the same time uh, using using that. Okay. Uh, this is too small, I can't cheat it by placing a decoy to trap the, the Weba. There wasn't an arrow on here, I could. Just Weba steps one, place a decoy. Be a fun solution. So, with the challenge worded the way that it is, it's like, what's even the point of that? Because I have to be standing there. I have to be standing there in the Ormites for this to trigger in the first place, which means that there really wasn't any reason to ever have Bethro stand on one of these, is there? Oh, wait, no, okay, I see why the challenge would, would totally not work the way I wanted it to then. Yeah, because if it did, um, the easy, so the easy way to do this the easy way to solve this uh, puzzle, which one's the furthest? Well, one of the ones down here. Yeah, I guess this one's never gonna go. The easy way to do this then would be uh oh no okay because of the wubba being in between b throw and the lemmings i'm not actually able to cheat it out just by hopping back and forth on these okay I don't get a staff in this room, so it's not like I can actually maneuver these around. Okay, so this is actually about timing then. Well, still, let's do what we can. Okay, I've, I've interrupted that. So it's doing stuff like this. So if I had you delay this by one turn, which I can I can or I can arrange to have set up by two turns, okay, lock you by two turns, and then I can step out of the way. So at this point, oh, you're gonna disarm me. That's that's a pain. Not ideal. Hmm. 
weight two. Okay, you two are now lined up. I uh, screwed that up. <coughs> One, two. Okay, you two are now lined up. So it's you two now that I have to be worried about. I... Oh wait, do you move after? That's what the issue was, okay. So actually, I want to move now. So I just solved that by using you. That's going to cost me the challenge, most likely. Well, let's see if we can figure out the rest of this. So how do we ever take this potion safely? I think we can't. Yeah, I don't think we take this potion. So, I mean, the obvious the obvious thing, then, is we place this potion before we release you. That's going to change all the other timings, though. Okay, so let's start over. If this potion was not here, that means you and you are the ones that are going to be timed up. So I still stall you one... Uh, so I stall you one turn, then, with this. Okay. I stall you one turn. Uh, which isn't going to give me enough time to get over here. Well... No, because this is going to be... Yeah, I, I can't have you here. You're going you're gonna to be here when this is opened. I can have this already dropped, so that you'll go at 6, which would mean... Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So the problem is, is that you're the longest now. Ah, oh, no, no, that's fine. So we're going to use this to delay you for one turn, and this to delay you for one turn, and that's going to be two, three, four, five, six turns after you move. Eleven, four, six. Okay, you move last. Okay. Okay, so I think that's what we're going to do. You delay this for one turn. 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 And you... In... Four, five, six turns. But they're both going to have moved seven by that time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah! Nope, nope, that's fine. Okay, I can change my orientation without messing up the mimic. That's your seventh move, and I need you to be stopped exactly on your seventh move. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need it to be placed here. Okay. Use the diagonals to get to get myself into position. Uh, I 
Wait, I'm I'm delaying the wrong one. Also, I was off on my timing. Okay, well those were all ones, okay. So move both of these, okay, first step. Move both of these one further. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is this what I wanted? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So let's not worry about anything else just yet. Let's just check. So yeah, those all messed up. Oh. Right. Okay. Yep, so I've got the decoys, I've got the decoys, and those four lemmings worked. Worked out. So now I just have to delay this one and this one one turn each. You move after all the other lemmings. Okay, well you're in the wrong spot. You need to be up here. Oh, now I'm uh, now I'm getting myself into a terrible position. One more so that I can delay by one, delay by one, delay by one. Like that. Why do I have a decoy here? Ah, I see. I see why. My name is Beethro. There we go. Now it doesn't matter what happens here. <laughs> Lemming only. No little secret passages? Huh. This was weird. Why were these two rooms optional? They were so much easier than anything else that I've done. Well, I mean, this one was pretty easy, too. Is it easy? Easy is getting three, three rooms done in a, uh, in a single hour, apparently. Alright, well... Uh, there's hope, I guess. Oh, these, these tunnels are just to avoid this mess, by the way. Because you can't get through the arrows. Well, I guess there's there's hope for this hold. I'm going to get through it. And, oh no, more challenges. Oh, well, this doesn't look... This looks like a very constrained amount of space. Uh, so let's just uh, solve this one real fast uh, in the next part. I'm hopefully able to do that. I will see you then.